I'm standing back here in front of the camera because my phone alerted me that uh, it was two years ago since I got this trolley. It showed me a picture of the box being delivered. Um, so it's kind of prompted me to get it out, get the camera out and uh, do another video. So we're two years on. Um, I'd like to speak about how the trolley's been, um, what I've noticed with it, any changes, um, and, and maybe run a couple of tests as we go. Now, two years is a long time, so what's changed in two years? Well, we've got some new clubs in the bag. You might notice it's a new bag, although it's the new version of exactly the same bag. It's still a Sun Mountain. It's still the H2 No Elite cart bag. Um, main difference being a, a few pockets in different places, slightly different color scheme. But the, the significant thing for this trolley is that it has a cutout in the bottom of it, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Um, that basically allows it to slot onto the, the base of the trolley and uh, Stuart do their own version of this, that it locks in and it stops the bag rotating. Now, to be honest, I never had any problems with my previous bag rotating. My previous bag was just starting to look a bit tatty and I quite fancied a change. So um, it should help with it, with any rotation, but never really had a problem with that. So when I play golf, I wear a Garmin watch and it generally tracks my rounds and my stats and things. And uh, I've looked up and I've counted back through the last two years and it's got me down as playing 78 rounds. Now 78 rounds in two years doesn't sound like an awful lot. However, when you factor in probably three or four months of not golfing due to COVID, I've broken my ribs twice in the last uh, year. So I've probably had six or seven weeks out with that. So when you factor in 12 to 14 weeks of that, um, we've also had some really, really horrible weather. We've had a bit of snow, we've had a lot of rain course has been closed due to being waterlogged, to being frosty, to being snowy. Um, so that's taken quite a lot out of it as well. Um, under normal circumstances in two years I'd probably hope to have more like 120 rounds but hey ho. There's a few things with the trolley I'd like to speak about. The first one I'm going to go to is that I've been perhaps in the car park, I'm putting my shoes on it, this is all set up and ready to go and there's a car trying to get past and maybe blocking something. So I go to lift it and move it. Simple movement, obviously the wheels, I don't have the remote or whatever, so I ought to do that. Now a couple of times I've done this, and this has actually gone this way. So if the hinge here has almost felt like it snapped, it made a cracking noise, and it went up the way. And the first time I did it, I was like, oh my god, I've broken it. But it clicked back into place, and then it's fine. And it's done it a couple of times over the last six months. But it always returns to its original position and, and works fine, so I guess it's not really an issue. On my previous videos, one of, I think it was my third round out with the trolley, uh, I snapped this rear stabiliser here. It snapped in half. Um, I contacted Stuart immediately and said this is broken and they gave me the option of send the trolley in for repair or we can send you out a new stabiliser. I opted for them sending me it out. I fitted it myself, it was really easy and uh, it's been absolutely rock solid ever since. The explanation was that perhaps my trolley had been knocked in transit, the, the stabiliser itself had fractured and then taking it out in the course it had maybe gone over a bump using the stabiliser and snapped off. Which seems like a logical explanation now because, like I say, two years further on it hasn't happened again and it's been solid. What else have we got? We've got um, the wheels, so in one of my first videos I plasti dipped these wheels in this kind of metallic silver and um, I put a, a nice lacquer on them to give them a shine. And it's held up really well, they've been easy to clean, they still look, from a distance anyway, like new. If you were to look a bit closer at them, you maybe see a few little chips, but they, they still look good. Um, when in summer, perhaps, I might give them another couple of coats. The tyres on this are still decent grip, and they do have a bit of wear to them. Um, my course seems to have quite a, a sort of hard pack um, gravel paths, rather than concrete between the holes. And to be honest, most holes are grass to grass. There's n that's only on, on a few holes anyway. Um, I think if you are running this on concrete paths, you might wear them out a lot quicker because a lot of the action of the trolley is put the brakes on this one and let this wheel go, so it kind of skids a bit. Um, but I think I'll get another couple of years out of them before they're needed replaced. So the remote handset on this one works really, really well. I found on my X9 follow I often had a problem where the Bluetooth connection between the handset and the trolley would drop out. So I might have the trolley around the other side of the green, I'd go to press go, it wouldn't move. Um, 
sometimes that was cured by turning the handset off and on again and it would repair and sometimes it just wouldn't and what would happen then is I'd have to walk right around the green get to the trolley, turn it off, turn it back on, probably turn this off and on and they would repair and then I could move on but thankfully that doesn't happen with this one at all it's a rock solid connection and it has never dropped um, other thing with the handset I often play in outings and we go do back to back rounds uh, two in a day and I was always concerned that although the trolley battery itself is classified as 36 holes this doesn't have any sort of rating on it and I was worried that it wouldn't actually make two rounds but thankfully it does um, just as a backup I always carry a USB power bank in my bag and a charging cable for it just in case though because I know from first hand experience pushing this without a motor is not much fun and uh, you probably know that you can't use this trolley without the handset at all. Now the next thing I want to do is speak about the bag but before I do that I'm going to take my bag off the trolley and fold the trolley up and I'll do that off camera because it's easier. I've spoken previously about how useful I find the carry case how it prevents getting dirt in the car, prevents getting dirt in the house or garage or whatever. I found another really useful use for it. I will show you this. So most trolleys have the same problem that you need to take the battery out of them to be able to charge it. And another issue we have here with this one is that we need to be able to take to almost like half build the trolley to be able to get the battery out. So when you come home from golf and you want to open your uh, trolley up that's covered in dirt, what do you do? You can lie this flat and then you can actually put your trolley on here and then you've got a, a kind of mat for catching your dirt on and you can fold your trolley to that far and you can get the battery out. And a few queries about how to get the battery out um, it's it's in the instruction manual it's on YouTube etc but button here just at the back you can press it here it release and lift it out like so so while I've got the battery here I think it's worth mentioning that in one of my previous videos I managed to do three full rounds on a single charge of this and um, quite a hilly course and I got to the end with 12% remaining now what I'd like to do two years later is see if I can still get three full rounds. So I'm going to play my next three rounds off this single charge and we'll see how far we get to the end. So with that in mind, I'm going to pop this back in the trolley and head off to the course. So I'm actually four weeks further on in real life than that part of the video you've just watched. Uh, two reasons for that. One is I went out for that round and uh, the course was still in winter conditions. So we had winter greens, we were a whole short um, and generally the course was just playing a lot shorter than it should have. So I don't think that's a very fair test. I've charged it up fully again and I'm going to do three full rounds with it now open in summer conditions. Uh, the full course like it would have been when I did it two years ago. Um, the other reason is I've been in Florida for the kids Easter holidays for the last couple of weeks. So I've managed to get uh, four rounds of golf over there in actual sunshine instead of what we've got here. So before I went away I sent the trolley back to Stuart for a service since it was two years old and Stuart had very kindly done some modifications to it uh, to bring it up to the current spec. So if, if you're looking at it now you can probably see this one which is the, the strap that holds the bag in place. It has changed and I'll take the camera a bit closer for a, a look at that in a minute. Um, the rest of the things are almost unnoticed I'll put a list up on the, the screen of the things they did change and there are lots of them. Um, I think a lot of the structure has changed and uh, one of the comments was it should feel a lot more stable, it should be a, a lot more sturdy feeling when you're, you're holding on to the handle. So we'll be able to test that out in the course in a minute. You can see from the screenshots that the battery percentage is going down approximately 10 or 11% every six holes I play. Stuart recommend that the battery degradation should be approximately 2% every year, so I should be looking at about 4% overall. Just a quick update, I am away to head out for my third round uh, with the same charge, and the trolley is currently at 37%. Now, 37% might be a bit of a risk because the last time I did this, it was 42% when I went out for my third round, and I finished with 12%. Um, and we know that the trolley cuts out at 5%. So 
So we'll see how that goes. It might give me a chance to try out the, the new improved chassis and see how, uh, how well it copes when pushing it without any power. Let's wait and see. I'll keep you updated. Well, that's six holes down now. Uh, the panic is starting to set in. It's uh, going to be a really slow round, a couple of four balls in front. Uh, reasonably nice day, so people are out playing. May day. 27% um, after six holes. Looks like I might be pushing, but we'll, uh, we'll find out as we go. I've been using a follow trolley now for about five years and it still amazes me how good it is. As long as there's about two feet to either side of the path, it can make it up anything. Right, it's not looking good. We've just finished 12 holes and if you can see that, it's 10%. Um, this part of the course has been quite easy up until now. We're about to do a big uphill section, so I'm guessing I'm out of luck. Something else to say before the trolley uh, runs out is um, after having played four rounds in Florida, where I'm in a buggy and uh, driving between shots, I realised that I actually prefer walking the course. Um, walking the course gives you that chance to kind of think about your shot rather than just sort of turning up, getting out and hitting it. Um, we had some random people with us, so sometimes we had three carts on the, the course at once, which meant that we were waiting for other people to play and you weren't going straight to your ball. And uh, I think you lose focus from that as well. So being able to walk the course, not have to carry your clubs, and not have to think about anything as this trolley just follows you along, um, really, really good idea. Um, something I don't think I'd ever go back to not having a follow function. So we've just gone from 5% to 0% right this second. Right, I've had great fun pushing this up the 13th, 14th and 15th and then also down the 16th. Um, so what I've come to realise is pushing this thing uphill is no fun. Um, it's 33 kilograms, I think it was about 19 for the trolley and about 14 for the bag. Um, the handle's not particularly ergonomic for pushing without power. And the other thing that's all quite interesting is uh, because you've unlocked the wheels, there's no resistance from the motor. So if you let it go on a hill, it goes. Um, so you need to be careful to park it sideways across the hill when you're playing a shot. Um, positive from this, I think, is that the, the new handle is definitely stiffer. Um, the, the trolley feels more structurally sound when you're pushing than the, um, the original version did. Now, clearly this trolley was never designed to be used as a, a push trolley. The, um, the wheels unlock as a, a get out of jail card um, to give you that chance to push it if you uh, forget to charge it. And to be honest, when you can do, what, 48 holes on the battery, you should never ever be in the position I'm in. Something I feel this trolley is lacking are front mud guards over the front wheels. You can see how the grass on a wet day has come up and thrown itself all over my bag. The X series had these, and uh, I never once had a problem with grass all over my bag with this one. After that round, you can see how useful the bag is for uh, unfolding the trolley and getting the battery out. Clearly there would be grass everywhere if I didn't have it lying in the bottom of the bag. So I've now done uh, three rounds with this new strap. Um, it seems absolutely rock solid. I'll just give you a quick demonstration of it on the bag. Um, my first concern was it's not very long. Um, same issue with the other one. I don't know if the Stuart bags are a much narrower, thinner circumference, but give it a decent pull. I've got four bits there. Put the excess into this sort of retaining clip. And there you can pull that. It's absolutely rock solid and going nowhere. When you're done with it, obviously take that out with the retaining clip and just slide it off to the side. It works so much better. So since I started this video, Stuart have actually released a new trolley, and the new trolley is called the Apex. Uh, the Apex doesn't have a follow function, but it does have some quite cool features, one of which is called ATC, which is Active Terrain Control, and it kind of regulates the speed on hills. Um, I just hope that one day these features come to the, the new follow trolley. As you've probably gathered, the follow function is a, a major player for me. It's one of the most important features of the trolley. And I think that Stuart are leading the way with the follow functions. The only other trolley I've ever seen that has a follow function is made by Foresight, and it's called the Foresight Sports 4Caddy. 
And to be honest, I don't even think that's available in the UK. I've never seen one in real life. I'd say overall the last two years have been pretty rock solid with the Q Follow, with uh, no major faults. Um, it has had a minor bit of battery degradation, however that's to be expected with a, a battery that's two years old. Um, I still think I prefer the look of the X series trolley rather than the Q Follow, but to be honest the Q Follow is probably one of the most complete trolleys out there. Still top of my wish list would be a set of buttons, controls, whatever, on the handle so that you could move it quite easily without having to take the remote off your belt and press the button. Stuart actually offer a 30 day money back guarantee on all their trolleys, so if you're sitting on the fence and watching this thinking that looks quite good, why not go out and get one? Um, you might end up thinking, how on earth have I managed to play golf without this before? Final thing is uh, thanks to everybody who's watched this, thanks to everybody who's watched and liked and subscribed to the previous videos, and I've actually got uh, another video coming out hopefully in the next few weeks uh, with something new and exciting, so stay tuned for that.